Hi, and welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast, where we sit, eat, chat, and repeat. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong, and we are coming to you from Austin, Texas. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com, and you can search your city for local restaurants, stores, butchers, farmers markets, and more who are using organic, fresh, artisanal, and local sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. So I get on set, and uh, I believe my first, I think I only even had one scene that day. It was like a super simple day. But I like walk in, and uh, I, it was to the whatever bar it was called, um, it was like the burger bar or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and Seth and um, Brandon Routh and Aaron Torpy, it was Jessica and Seth, and um, and I'm supposed to walk up. I think, well, I'm saying that, I don't even know. It might not have been <laughs> those people, but I know Aaron was there for sure, because I have her wallet and I hand her back her wallet. And the whole time I'm thinking, my leg is going like this, and are they seeing it? <laughs> I was like, they can, they have to see how much I'm shaking right now and I can't make it stop. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, just trying to stay out of this heat. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty brutal. It's been brutal. Where, where are you at exactly um, right now? I'm in the Dallas area, but what's funny is, I mean, I've been here when it's way hotter. I can see heat waves and things like that, and it's really not, I mean, if you look at the temperature, it's like 80-something, but it's a thousand degree, I mean, it's a thousand percent humidity. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <sighs> totally, and I'm in Austin, so it, there's a lot of humidity here. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. We did have a little bit of a break, and that's a break for us. You know, it's like, oh, it's only 98 today. That's nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fine. It's good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> some yard work, roofing probably would be the best thing to do right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's funny. Um, well, that's great. So you, so Dallas area, is that where you grew up mainly? I did, yes, I did. Nice. Um, yeah, me too. I grew up in the Dallas area too. Tell us a little bit about that. Like where exactly in the, in da the Dallas area? Um, in Plano, actually. I was born in Dallas, but Plano. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I always loved where I lived. Um, of course, you know, it's one of those weird catch 22s because somewhere in my teens, I think is when I knew I was going to head off to LA and become a famous actress or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> and um, so then I couldn't wait to get out of Texas, but it was never really about Texas. It was just more about, I've got to follow, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Gosh, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know if I've ever even heard it explained that way. Uh, but you're right. It's not about, you wish you could take Texas with you, right? Totally. Like in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. Because the one thing that was probably the hardest was like leaving my family, the really good food. <laughs> That's hilarious. The food, right? That is so funny. So, it, so it was just a, a blunt transition for you then, right? From from Plano, literally to LA. Was that was yeah. that how it was, or did you go other places first? No, I went to LA. I had gone. Um, I had been in LA a couple of times for you know a few months um, stints in the past, and then uh, I had also done New York for about a month. So when I was younger, so it was I was familiar, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> with both, uh, <laughs> but um, the move move was LA. Wow, that must have been just. What, did you have family like, "Yep, this is the right thing to do," or was it like, "What girl, what are you doing?" <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. I would say um, majority of outside family was like, "Are you crazy?" Yeah, um, <laughs> and and then those that were really close to me were just like, "Yep, go do it." and very supportive. So I think it was just a matter of, and, and mostly those that were thinking I was crazy, I think more than anything, were just concerned because, I mean, we all know it's like you're sure. a little fish in a huge ocean and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, just, they were worried that I'd get eaten up or that I was just being a little too, you know, dreamy, but, uh, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> was it like, was it like, you know, you got to get a real job and, you know, so, go to college and get to work and... I, Kind of. Um, so, <laughs> so when I was, a, I think I was 15, I don't know, 15, 16, somewhere in that, uh, I came to my mom and I said, um, all right, so I'm, I'm going to run away. 
it's nothing personal. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to LA and I held up this like Ziploc bag of cash that I've been saving for like two years. Oh, wow. Uh, which probably wasn't much. And I was like, <laughs> and it's okay. I'm going to enroll myself in school when I get there. And, uh, and I had this like whole plot that wasn't really that well thought out, but I thought it was really well thought out. Sure, um, of course. And how I was going to execute this. Yeah. And um, my mom just kind of looked at me and she didn't even like, she didn't give me the like, you're nuts or anything. It was just kind of like, <laughs> no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> That's hard to argue with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just so yeah. Like, but then she said, but she says, why don't we talk to your school and we can see about getting you um, out early, like having you graduate early and see what that process is like. So I have a feeling she'd already kind of been talking to someone because she had a really good answer very quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, so that's funny. What we did. And so she went to my school and we talked to the counselor, found out that, you know, you could take some summer school classes to advance to the next level. Cause it was basically, I think your senior year, you didn't have to have as many certain credits, whatever. So yep. you did them all in my junior year. It was fine. And, uh, so then that's what I did and, um, graduated early. And then the deal that my parents and I made were that as long as I went to school, um, they would help support me while I was there. And I was like, okay. Um, so, <laughs> but I was like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, of course. Right. So I went to, I went to Quad C, which was um, community college in Plano that's now actually a university. Um, and uh, I went there for like the first semester just to get to, um, I wanted to hit that like year mark or whatever, going at pilot season basically. And then moved on out. And I did. I went to school for about three and a half years, I want to say. I think it was. And then my last year, so I have like crazy anxiety with certain things in school. And one of the things in my school that we had was that our last semester was we were supposed to write this thesis paper. And I didn't know a whole lot about it other than like I knew that apparently it was a lot of work and our school didn't have a library or anything like that and so and I was working full-time as well so I was like how am I going to do this and all I could think about was next semester and not what I was doing <laughs> <laughs> and so I started to get insanely overwhelmed and I wasn't retaining any information anymore and I think I just honestly was like burnout and um so I went to my parents and I was like oh this is going to be a bad conversation and it's like I um I really think I need to drop out of school and they were like what <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm out here for my passion, but I'm working a full-time job, working school full-time, and I'm not being able to concentrate on the thing I'm here for. Yeah. And so my mom, it took my dad a minute. He was not very happy about that decision, but my mom thought about it. We, we talked about it a lot and she okayed it, but I did. I focused like a lot and literally, I think it was within six months, I booked one life. Actually, I think it was like four months. I booked one. Wow. So it was wow. a good decision. <laughs> wow. That's unbelievable, yeah. right? Like, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Well, there's probably people that, I guess your parents' concerns probably, there are people that say, yeah, I'm going to concentrate more on this, but then they yeah. actually don't do it, right? Like nice. they, yeah. they goof off or whatever. Um, totally. gosh, that's crazy. Well, that's, um, that's amazing. Um, uh, well, you stuck it out for a long time doing both. Which yeah. I can't, I can't even imagine um, the drive really that you must have had. I mean, because at that age, I mean, I remember myself. I had zero drive. I just yeah. like I just want to survive the day, and uh, yeah, you know, that's crazy. So, how were the auditions for you like going out there and transitioning? I mean, you said you'd already done a few things. You'd been out. You probably, you know, you had your feet wet a little bit, but a little bit, was yeah. it like a whole new animal? Because now it's go yeah. go go. Yeah, it was weird because, so when I had gone before, I think if I remember correctly, I had got an agent then, so, and they were the ones who were like, you need to get out here. Yeah. So when I came out, it was, um, I want to say there had been a strike or something, I don't remember exactly, but pretty much, um, uh, if I remember correctly, they went out of business about the day I came. Um, yeah. almost. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so it was kind of like, okay, got to figure this out, and I, it was just, by a lot of different circumstances and people that I knew that it worked out weirdly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't have that many auditions at first and it was a little like, 
scary and disheartening because you're just like, well, what do I do now? And yeah. who do I go to? And I mean, any actor knows like when you're starting off again, it's like, and you don't have a connection, it's, it's daunting. Yeah. And uh, like, who, whose door do you knock on that's even going to listen, you know, <laughs> um, or answer or even think about answering. So um, if I, this feels like it's so long ago that my brain's like, mm, order here, not here. <laughs> but, but if I remember correctly, I, um, somewhere in that, I ended up meeting, so there was this guy who lived in um, a complex that was, but I didn't live there, but somebody else I knew did. And somehow we all knew each other through this or whatever. And so I met him and he had this manager guy that he was just like raving about. Used to be a publicist for New Kids on the Block. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, wow. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, like, he's all good. <laughs> uh, he's like, the, the only caveat is, you know, he doesn't like working with women. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, you just need to like prove that the, you're not The right. only caveat, like that's just right. like a that little thing. Like, like little thing yeah just a little like, okay no problem no problem he gets, he gets <laughs> when you meet him like you just we just need to make sure that like he gets that you're not like other women and i was like oh okay sure and um <laughs> so so that's what we did so i go i go to his apartment and uh you know i think i had to do a little scene or something and you know, he gave me the spiel of like, ah, blah 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 don't like women blah 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 and i was like cool and i was like yeah I'm, you know whatever. I don't even know what I said. I came up with some great stuff. Um, <laughs> like, they just make me. And, that was um, the real, that was the real scene. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the thing that was kind of cool is like, we ended up becoming uh, decent friends and, um, you know, I met some people through him uh, that are, that I actually still to this day know. And, um, you know, found another uh, acting coach. And then through that, I started meeting other people. And eventually, shocker, um, he didn't want to represent me anymore because he just didn't have a thing for women. And I was like, yeah. I get it. Um, yeah. It was sad because I loved him as a person. And he, he was sad because it was just, we, we were good as like friends, but we were just not good as far as him getting me uh, out there. So, but it was like a blessing in disguise. Because apparently he and the agent I had at the time had a huge falling out. So uh, they were going to drop me because of him. And so when I was like, oh, hey, um, <laughs> I don't anymore. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then that kind of weirdly worked out. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah. And then it was like someone else told me about another acting club. In fact, he might have actually. And I had joined that one. And then you know, several months later, my current managers walked in who I didn't know were managers and they watched the acting class and later approached me. And now they've been my managers for, we won't say how many years. Um, <laughs> 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 and, um, and my life changed after that, honestly, like they, they were just like, Oh, we got it. Mm -mm. And it was like, boom, 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 boom. I got a new agent. I got a uh, commercial agent and then I was going out all the time and, and it's kind of a, a matter of numbers, right? Like the more auditions you go on, the better your chances get. And, and yeah. Happen. Yeah. Wow. So is that how, you know, they find people, they go into these acting classes and just like, oh yeah, that, that person. I think, you, you know, know, it's one of those things it. where, yeah. And then <laughs> probably other, you know, I don't think there's a stand really. Sure. Um, I think in their particular case, um, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. You're not going to go to like the bowling alley. Like, I don't know why you would. Some might. Some I mean, might. <laughs> maybe right. Not right now. During yeah. The pandemic, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, no, well, so in this particular case, the, my managers were friends with the, um, the teacher that was, that was teaching. So I think that was part of it. And I don't got know it going in there just to like two recruit or if they were going in there just as a support to him but it yeah. worked out in my favor so whatever <laughs> did you did you yeah totally did you know like that they were coming that day or that Not was told afterward the fun so this is what's funny so i um i'll confess like i have i have some uh cray cray up in there about uh weight it's like uh, so i actually have this thing called body dysmorphia which i can't tell the difference between when i'm skinny and when i'm fat and i'll continually continuously be the opposite of both so anyway, this particular time, I was really skinny, but I really thought I wasn't. And um, 
And that particular day, I, we, whatever scene it was that we were doing, I just felt, you know, I had kind of a bad day. And then on top of it, it just felt like I wasn't very connected. I felt like I overacted, you know, everything that could go wrong is what I was thinking. And I had no idea who these people were. I thought they might be coming in to take a class or something. Um, or like friends somehow, you know, yeah. nothing, nothing important in my mind. So all I know is I left that day going, God, what a horrible, like class, what, not against the class, but with me and, uh, and whatever. Right. And then it was like within a week I get a call from, I think it was the teacher and he was like, so we gave your, um, information over to, uh, these managers, those people who were in the class before, and they, they're interested in meeting with you, obviously do what you want. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> it's like weird timing too, because it was like just yeah. after the. the you call time. Melissa. You call Melissa. You know that, right? right like you know. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you okay? And then they were like, "You were fabulous in the scene," and I was like, "That's okay. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is so funny." You're like, uh, then, <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's great. Yeah, you probably. Um, I, I feel you know. I will talk to a lot of different actors. I feel like they kind of are very just critical of their own right of i get it i mean it makes sense you're you're supposed to inhabit other people you're supposed to be critical of people then sort of inhabit that i guess i i really don't i'm talking about acting like as if i knew something i I know zero (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) bs i I got a i got a phd in bs over here that's it Uh, (laughs) did we go to the same school (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it that's great so that's great so you get this you know new opportunity you see your life changing did you like call home immediately i'm curious about that were you oh, just yeah. like you know Ma- see dad can tell dad it's happening yeah. right like <laughs> no uh yeah anytime uh like so i'm very 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 close with my family and so good or bad they got phone calls and uh um actually the day i the day I got one life, that was, woof, I was like crazy. I can't even imagine. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course. I was actually driving. I was at work. I'd had kind of a bad day, actually, too. Um, so that's always nice, right? Like, it's totally. a horrible day. And now I'm driving over to the place I went to for lunch, like, every day. I knew the owners there. It was like a little thing, you know? And so I'm heading over, and the phone rings, and it's my agent. Of course, it's like, oh, okay. And um, I'd been waiting on two different ones that I was hoping for. One was One Life, and one was a commercial. And um, and he calls, and they're, they're like, blah, 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 you got it. And I was like, wow. And then I'm like, driving, <laughs> and I'm like so excited that it was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to pull over. Like, I'm shaking, you know? Oh, wow. And then, and then, like, you know, it's like you're crying, but you're trying not to, like, look that desperately happy. <laughs> But you're so happy. You should be happy. You worked right? hard. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, it was so incredible. And um. That's and awesome. so, did you did you still go eat lunch? Oh yeah, because then I had you to did. Get the owners. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, we're getting chicken on this Caesar salad today. Okay. I'll say, I'll, I'll we, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's that. Yeah, that's so amazing. So, so you get you know you get started with this opportunity, sort of moving into the. I'm sure you're ner- you know nervous on set, maybe a little bit. Uh, rehearsals, oh like you know, so, yeah, I can't even imagine. So one of the things that I always try to do is pretend. I, so I do one of two things. I either pretend I'm completely dumb so that people can teach me and that way I don't say something that is dumb, and then people are like, she she was supposed to know that. Like if I play dumb, smart. Then- that's smart. <laughs> However, the other way I do is I pretend like I've been doing it for a million years. <laughs> <laughs> the complete opposite. Uh, <laughs> like, one or the other, depending on my mood, right? I love that. I love so that. I didn't want to be, I, you know, so, but the way to do that sometimes is by like, just not speaking as much. Like the less you say, the more people think you know what you're doing. It's great. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> so it's the first day of set, and um, and so the class, the acting class I was taking in LA, they actually uh, is Brian Reese, and he is really really good at prepping you for what it's going to be like, whether you're doing you know um, a screen test or whether you're <clears throat> actually on set or what have you. So there was a little bit of like feeling of experience, even though I'd had not much. Um, so anyway. <laughs> 
So I get on set and uh, I, I believe my first, I think I only even had one scene that day. It was like a super simple day. But I like walk in and uh, I, it was to the whatever bar it was called. Um, it was like the burger bar or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and Seth and um, Brandon Routh and Aaron Torpy, it was Jessica and Seth and um, and I'm supposed to walk up. I think look, I'm saying that. I don't even know. It might not have been <laughs> those people, but I know Aaron was there for sure because I have her wallet and I hand her back her wallet. And the whole time I'm thinking, my leg is going like this and are they seeing it? <laughs> I was like, they can, they have to see how much I'm shaking right now and I can't make it stop. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I like hand her the wallet, say my line or whatever, and then I turn around and walk out and I'm like, and the whole time still just shaking, shaking, shaking. And, you know, so things don't air right away. So we didn't see it. I can't remember how far away we were. I want to say like a month and a half-ish. Oh, wow. Really? And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I started on June 4th fourth ish and my first air date was july 16th got it so oh, the date weird that i remember that um <laughs> so. oh, I, I can totally understand why you remember the first one right yeah. First date. So, um yeah so i watched it and you really couldn't see so yay <laughs> probably a lot up here right what we think of ourselves i'm i can be the same way as far as that sort of thing goes like oh my god did they see me do that or say this or move this right or whatever and then later on it's like what are you talking about totally <laughs> it's like oh no, i mean no, never mind it's, uh, <laughs> never mind my wife, my wife does my wife says that to me all the time that i'll just bring stuff up she's like what are you talking i mean she just doesn't even fin i don't even think she lets me finish anymore just <laughs> what are you talking just stop what? yeah <laughs> and then i know right there okay um, um yeah. <laughs> so that's great so you're doing this scene and you you know <laughs> pardon me so, you know, it starts to obviously grow, right? The character. How involved are you in developing, you Nothing. know, character? It, Not at all. No, they, um, so actually when I was, <laughs> say when I auditioned, uh, I auditioned for one role. When I got the screen test, I think it was like right before I got on the plane, they were like, oh, hey, we've got a new script for you. By the way, it's also new character and like different, like, everything is like oh, okay so i'm looking at it on the plane and everything <laughs> I like it. it was it was like going from like the good girl to like the complete bitch uh, <laughs> pardon my french so it's <laughs> really because i just feel like every time you say a curse word you say part of my french but then i feel kind of bad that we're just putting it all on one language um, yeah, you're right that, that you're right that's uh, the french are just like whoa hey what hey what <laughs> anyway <I'm a> <laughs> <laughs> so um so so i like learned that i'm like okay fine great and that's more fun anyway right um and then i get the part and i had been under the impression based off of i think what they had told me or maybe even what was in the script i can't remember but that i was gonna be perhaps ben and ooh, what was her name G gina gina's kid and then kind of nothing was happening with it. And then all of a sudden I found out maybe, I don't know, a month or so into it that they decided they were going to make me a Buchanan and that I was going to be Vicky's daughter. And then I started to find out about the switch and da, 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 that turned out to, in the end, we ended up being sisters anyway. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that was kind of like amazing. I remember just calling my mom being like, mm, I think things are working out. <laughs> I don't think they're getting rid of me next week, mom. I just, <laughs> that i don't know this i got a hint yeah <laughs> no, like things are good <laughs> that's like that's so awesome i mean you gotta yeah. think you know you i understand uh as a just a human being and, and as an actor you know you're sensitive you're creative i i get it i do creative things myself i get how we can be you know but at the same time you always have to remember they hired you for a reason right like there's a they believe in you yeah. for right so yeah i think that's amazing um yeah i can totally see why they why they gave it to you and having that long stretch um it's just absolutely you know amazing right i mean just yeah. saying do, does your family watch this yeah. stuff that you do or they don't okay so they yeah, are yeah. Okay. some people don't i know they have some families just like no nah, they don't watch it <laughs> i think i mean some didn't i mean it's still it was still a soap opera so if you weren't like into soap operas it was probably something you weren't gonna do but my mom like oh she actually watched one life um that was her soap opera so yeah. that worked out really well yeah. and then um yeah, my mom watched all of them i mean she yeah. had 
boom, boom, boom. And my look, man, my mom's from Mexico. Oh so wow! Even, even when I would go to Mexico City, they would watch all the American soap operas. Still, you know, down there, so even down there, everyone was caught up on everything. Yeah. That was happening, uh, as well, so it was like, yeah, a big, big part of my life growing up. To be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my grandparents, they like literally recorded every single episode. Whether it was on it or not, but <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna be safe. We're just gonna play. Yeah, it. That's, okay. just That's just great. And they watched it live, so it was kind of like they they had it, but they also watched it live. And they got upset if you interrupted them when they were watching it live, even though they were recording it. And <laughs> and I was usually the one who was interrupting them because I talked to my grandparents every day, and they were like, "We're watching on live call back," you know. <laughs> Hilarious. You know? That's so funny. Gosh, that wow! This is proud of you. You know, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. So as you're, you know, starting to go and you're getting more comfortable, right on set, and you know, mm -hmm. things starts to happen. I don't know what sort of did you feel like? Okay, this is you know, this is where I want to be right now. Or were you ever having thoughts of, you know, trying to do other things? Or I, I don't know. I, I have no idea how that process goes. You know. Mm -hmm. Curious. I mean, as far as other other acting work. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a chef, right? So I've worked in a lot of restaurants, and I I just I know that sometimes after a little while, you're cooking the same food, you're sort of doing the sure. same. It's like you know what, I, I want to go try, you know, do this or something. I don't know. Does that does oh, yeah. happen? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think mo for most of us, for most actors, like we love playing other people, so it's fun to have the change. Um, the thing about being on a being contract on a soap and especially back then and especially um being in heavy storyline there wasn't a lot of free time available to do other work and your first um priority was the show so it was slightly challenging and then you did have these outs usually towards end of contract where you could potentially do something else however the time period in it and you still have to like the network still has to approve it so it becomes a thing where it makes it very very hard to do other work not yeah. saying you can't but it, it does make it challenging um and so it wasn't really until i think it was maybe in the last i don't know year or two or so that i was able to actually start doing some other stuff i mean i i would go on auditions occasionally in the earlier times but even casting directors a lot of times were like if you're on contract like we don't even want to we don't even want you to come in because especially in New York, a lot of stuff that they're bringing you in for is just for um, guest star. So it's like, they're going to be having you shoot the same week or the next week. And they, the turnaround so fast and we have to give more notice to the show. So they just didn't want to deal with it. Uh, and I don't blame them. How, how, many, how many episodes, like, is it a year or how is it broken down or? Um, well, contract wise, it's dependent on whatever you negotiate, but um so you usually get like a minimum guaranteed. Um, and the thing, the way that works, if I remember correctly, it's not so much that you'll definitely work it. You'll just definitely get paid it, if that makes sense. Um, and then if you work over that, then you make more, um, is I think how it works. If I, if it's, it's a minute, minute. But um, yeah. Uh, but as far as like how much we were doing, I mean, we had towards the end we had a lot more time off so but i don't even want to say that that means we did less episodes we just compacted a lot got it in, uh in a week i mean we were getting down to segmenting and really shooting sometimes 12 or more episodes a week dependent oh really it was like, like i said segmented but yeah yeah so it was a lot did you ever shoot stuff that was, you know, I'm, I'm about to shoot a scene from this episode and then I'm directly going to shoot a scene from another episode and then back and forth, like. Yeah, and you could be also just like super far out when you're doing it too, right? So you could be shooting something that's gonna like, you know, 12, the 12 episodes down the line or even further, depending, you know, yeah. So it could definitely get confusing. I feel bad for anyone who had to deal with continuity. That's. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I meant, man. I mean, I just can't even imagine, like... <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yes. Gosh, that is crazy. Yeah. Um, that is crazy. So, what, is there rehearsals, like, or is it just pretty much... Um, every show is different. Um, the way One Life got towards the end... <clears throat> well, I didn't want to say towards the end. It was So, when I started, 
they had already started changing a little bit of the way they did things. And, uh, but we had a camera block in the morning, <clears throat> which means, or I'm sorry, we had a dry rehearsal in the morning, which is where we would come and meet uh, be, and the director would give each of us our blocking, not necessarily on set, um, but just kind of tell us where to go. And they'd sometimes have to be in a room and they just use chairs from the, <laughs> for the, for uh. the um, furniture and tell you where to go. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple hours later, you would go and do camera blocking on set for the cameramen so that they were able to get their, understand where the actors were going to be and like get their focus and stuff like that. And then <clears throat> we would uh, have lunch in between that. And that's the time where you'd be getting your hair and makeup done, blah, 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 get ready. And then you would go up and shoot. I think I was like at one o'clock. And then at some point they decided that they were going to combine things and uh, start doing camera blocking as kind of like the rehearsal because we would do a rehearsal and then we would do a shoot uh, at, at one. So they took away the camera blocking in the morning and you just did the dry rehearsal. And then when it was time to go on set, you were basically doing the camera blocking as your rehearsal and then shoot. Um, and that was, that was pretty much how it went. What, what did you have a preference or did it matter or affect mm -hmm. you, your performance in any way? Um, so no, the thing, the thing is, is like one of the things you do, or for me anyway, you, you got used to very quickly is how the pace, it goes very fast. And in some ways it's like, um, great. Uh, in some ways there's suffering. So, you know, obviously sometimes when you take more time and you have more chances to rehearse th through things, you might have things go a little smoother. You might come up with an idea that you didn't think of before. Um, <clears throat> some of that pops through when you're doing it. But then there's also the value in um, how great something is when it's not over rehearsed. <clears throat> Pardon me. So um, there was definitely a value in some ways doing it that way. And um, it was kind of like, well, if you record it and it's not great, it's not like you can't do it again. Of course, the objective was to do it as few times as possible, but um, and not you. J the thing was, is as an actor, you didn't want to be the reason they had to stop. Uh, if cameras had to stop for some reason or production had to stop for some reason, fine, but you do not want to be the reason that they had to stop. Um, That's so, so nobody wants to be the blooper, right? Nobody wants that, that moment. No, not in the, in the, the latter years. No, they just, you know, the at times money. And so yeah. in order to keep on schedule and because the, if they had to go overtime, that means they have to pay not only, the actors, but then they have to pay the crew and it just becomes wildly expensive. And, um, at that time it was already becoming a burden, um, financially, um, because times had changed and the way people watched for was different and it wasn't the eighties anymore, you know, yeah. so, <clears throat> uh, which in some ways were great. It's just that, you know, how do you evolve? And I think network wise and the availability of how things could be seen hadn't really been, it, it was like, it hadn't gotten to where it is today. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. So how did, you know, what, how was that transition as far as like, you know, social media, internet, right? The, it, it can be viewed, I guess, in different ways, right? Different formats, as you were just mentioning. Right. Was that change for you, you know, I guess maybe good and bad, I guess, maybe, is a, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, so we had internet when I started. Um albeit I want to say it was still dial up. Uh, <laughs> AOL. AOL. Um, so there was that, but, um, and, and I were, and when you would go online and look up things, that, it was mostly forums, um, things like that, that you would find anything on. There wasn't what, you know, gosh, things have changed massively as far as even search. Um, but True. That's true. Um, they came out with SoapNet, I want to say a couple of years in, maybe a year into when I was there. And so that was kind of their first thing of like, okay, let's have a network, like a cable network just for soap operas. And it was kind of a test thing. So yeah, that was going to go. And um, then, you know, eventually, and then so when the social media thing came out, I don't remember what year that was. I was really against it. Um, I'm as open as I am, I'm fairly private. And uh, I didn't understand the point in talking to everybody all the time and people knowing everything about me because it was like, why? What would they care? What are we doing? Like, what's what's so exciting? Um, 
And it was also just like, as much as like our actors were all like a little self involved sometimes, um, there's still something to like having to be all like, oh, I'm promoting myself. Like, I hate it. So, um, <laughs> so I actually avoided it and I wouldn't, I refused to get social media at, in the beginning. And in fact, I think a couple of people just got me the names just so that <laughs> my name would be taken. <laughs> And um, held on to it for me until later. I was like, oh, thanks. Because then eventually I did have to go into the, yeah. the world of, and um, and I'm still not really that great at it. But um, anyway, uh, so yeah, I kind of fought that end of it. And then when we started being able to do internet, gosh, uh, like viewing on the online, I don't remember when that was. I mean, that was, I mean, it, it feels like it was so long ago, but I mean, that's actually still really new. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you're hunting anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, was that something like that? Did you, did it, did it ever influence how the show, mm. you know, the writing maybe or the storyline? Like, did any of that? Like, well, people are going to be able to be able to see it a certain way, so we want to show it a certain way. I don't know if those sort so of influences. What you're saying actually is brilliant and smart, and that's uh, I think the downfall of what soaps in general have kind of soaps and probably anything really, but dealing with is that when you're on a new platform like that, you have to consider how it's, how it's actually being watched and, um, and, and what people are actually doing when they're watching it. Right. Because most people who watch online, even in the beginning of it, when it first kind of came out, it was just people like to binge watch. It's like, Oh, cool. I mean, think about it this way. Let's go back to VCR. What did people do who worked a lot? A lot of times they would tape their soaps all week and then they would come home, you know, Friday night and watch all five. All of them, yeah. That's a lot of hours watching television, especially when back to back. So the way soaps were designed were so that if you were doing your laundry or you missed a day or whatever, that tomorrow you could come back on and not feel like you missed something. Because at the time that soaps were originally created, there was no rewind button, right? Um, so in the times of even just having VCRs, we didn't really accommodate for the fact that people could record and binge watch, which is what they were doing. Um, and so it, get, it goes slower when you're doing that, right? Because now you're watching five, let's just say, episodes, and it's like, oh, wow, they still haven't gotten to the huda wada wada, you know what I mean? Totally. And uh, it's fine when that's every day, but when you're watching five hours back to back, you're like, oh my gosh, are they ever going to get there? And... And, and the cliffhanger is not the same, you know, because it doesn't feel the same because you're binge watching. So anyway, and then when we moved into the world of internet watching, uh, like uh, Hulu and whatever else, um, and, and this is like the biggest thing I saw when we um, moved over to, uh, when One Life moved over to Hulu, was um, we were still putting it out there as though people were going to watch it daily, even if it was a 30 minute episode. Yeah. And, um, and really the way they're going to watch it is binge watch it. And so what you did is you created the exact same problem and you put it on a platform and, and instead of making one really good episode per week, excuse me, that was like more like a primetime drama, which are soap operas, um, yeah. you just have a bigger budget. So take the budget that you have for doing five episodes and put it into one really good episode and do a shorter term of it and do seasons, all of a sudden you're going to get a much better audience. But when you still do everything the same as before and you're putting it on this nice platform and pretty HD and you're still using the same sets, <laughs> it's like you're going to lose because it's, it's going to, it, it, because it's going to, it's just, it's, I don't want to say adapt. You didn't adapt with the well, right. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I think that's, my personal opinion was was a big part of that downfall. I mean, I think that makes a hundred. Uh, that's why I asked the question because to me, that yeah. makes absolute sense that you would have that conversation, right? That you would sit right. down with the executives. Okay, the world, you know, these things are changing. What are we going to do with the show to change with it? Because yeah. yeah, people, new the new generations, right, that are coming into this aren't looking at that going that that needs to right. be my what what I take now. You know, it, it is amazing how television shows have transformed, mm -hmm. you know, in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. You'd probably know better. Obviously, you would know better than me. But, you know, just at the television show, you know, on HBO or Netflix, right? All these, whatever, they're, they're just amazing, you know, limited. Basically, what you're saying, you know, shrinking it down, making a more, you know, better episode, 
you know, that, that sort of thing. And it, you know, true detective is like the first one I think of in my mind as being like, wow, that was a great television show. Like I can't remember and, and it being short and over and sweet and done with not like Soprano style where we're going to run 10 seasons. Right. So sort of, and I just think that's amazing. You know, how, how that transition has come because people noticed and they knew, okay, we've got a, people want this sort of, it's sort of the same thing with podcasts, you know, always say oh people just like bits and five second clips or 30 second clips and there's no people don't want these long it's like are you crazy i mean people listen to long form podcasts all the time mm -hmm. it's like i think they're hungry for better content you know it's all about the quality the content what what is it that you're providing and is it something that's going to better someone's life because we only have so much time even myself um you know, I used to watch tons and tons of TV. Hello, that's what I do. But at the same point in time, I started realizing like my life was wasting watching so much television and some of it was just, sorry, but crap, you know, and it's, it, it was hard to like justify what I was sticking in my head anymore. <laughs> it's like, I only have so much that I can, you know, bring in. And it's like, maybe I need to pick up a good book right now, or I need, I feel like I need to be doing something else. And I think that's kind of, the issue with any of the stuff that we're doing, it's like, it's great, but like, what can we do as um, technology changes, as platforms change, as uh, audience changes, as far as what they, what they need and what they want? How are we able to do that? And then on top of that, how are we able to fund it? And how are we going to survive, you know, that aspect? Because the reality is, is all television, film, all of that stuff is backed by advertisers of some sort. And those investors, those advertisers, they are just trying to find a way to get their product out there. So they're using um, these shows or what have you to, to do so. Um, and there's been kind of this like formula of how to do it for so long. And I, I think it took a really long time and maybe it's still kind of being worked out of how that really works, right? Um, and now it's, it's even crazier because there's so many things that are, um, tracking, uh, which is something I'm, I'm a privacy advocate. So it's very much so like against everything I like, and I get, I get it intellectually, like why this is happening, but you know, platforms are, are now doing it as well. Like television platform, what, whatever you call that internet television plat platforms are doing it now too. And, um, and so it might be more, um, uh, s specialized for you, but then at what cost? At what cost? I, I look, I 100% agree. I'm, I'm from a time just like you. We're probably around the same age. Um, you know, I was born in 79. So I, mm -hmm. perfect. Boom. Exactly the same age. So, you know, I definitely know a time before all of this, right? Okay. So, and very well okay. time. It's not like spent a couple of years in it. Um, it was my life. I never saw this coming, right? It wasn't like, oh, one day there's going to be this thing that rules us all, you know, yeah. Media, internet. I mean, just never, never saw. It. So I'm with you. I, I totally get it. it. It's a balance, you know. It's, yeah. it's a fight, uh, back and forth as well. Um, but I think you're right about the, you know, the content and whatnot. I'm, cur I'm curious your thought on this new platform that just came out called. Um, Quibi. Get the, wh what is it? Quibi. Yep, that's. A, I'm glad you said it because I was going to have a tough time saying that. Um, I'm curious um, what you think about that because I feel like it's been a total failure. Uh, yeah, well, kind of like launched right in the beginning of a pandemic. So totally, <laughs> yeah, that didn't. didn't have a very good start. Um, that didn't help. So Quibi is really interesting. Um, you know, I've heard I've heard different thoughts from different people, and I kind of see both sides of it. Um, and I I always try to be a little optimistic. My my thinking with it is, and and this is this is also me trying to completely understand uh, what they're doing. But I know they have advertisers backing it, but you also have to pay for the platform and it's the 10 minute episodes yeah um so me personally like i don't necessarily like things in such quick like the quick bites that they're going for but i know that that's definitely a generational thing and they're 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 truly doing this for a specific generation um i think they've got some cool gimmicky things that you can do initially with it to make it slightly more interesting however i don't know how long that gimmicky thing is going to be interesting to people like at first it might be cool but then like how often are people really going to be turn styling their phone just to see different aspects of it i don't know maybe they will maybe they won't um 
So it's kind of one of those things where I'd like to see. Um, and will they be, if, if they're able to get past this uh, pandemic, um, uh, if they're able to get past that and move to the next phase, what will they do to evolve uh, how they kind of set out to do things and what, you know, what would they do to change if they see that the audience isn't necessarily getting or uh, it's, it's not bringing what they thought it was going to bring to the, to the table. Or maybe it'll be like a huge success and they're like, hey, great. Good for you guys. <laughs> you know? Totally. Um, I, look, I'm all for a new content, new show. If I, I mean, right. To bring it on. I'm, it's, 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 it has nothing to do with that. Um, it's more just, oh, yeah you know, just is a good, I'm all, ab I'm all about anything that's new content, especially if there is a, a more creative way to like play with that and, and find out how it's going to go. I'm just curious always to see like, okay, but is that exactly like what you thought it was going to be? And if it's not, how are you going to change that? hundred percent. Look, I'm not me personally. I, I don't know, but it, it sounded like maybe you change it as your watchers. That seems crazy to me because I just want to set it down and right thing and at first i don't really watch anything too long on my phone right yeah. real if i'm gonna watch anything that's quick because it's in my hand i'm not gonna be you know whatever with it so yeah it's on a tv mainly um i don't know you know my wife and i were we were having this discussion about netflix um just last night or the night before because my wife's from spain so we watch everything with subtitles mm -hmm. and specifically spanish subtitles if we can find them and that's why we love Netflix. We watch Netflix like crazy because it doesn't matter what it is. They've got a million different subtitles for it. They've oh. got different like, you know, back end stuff that may, maybe it just as a normal viewer here in America, you wouldn't even think about. But in my household, it is something I think about. And I know that there's a lot of households like mine as well. Yeah. Um, it's not just Spanish. It might be, you know, they're wherever they're from, right? They're, they want to watch it in that language. Spanish being the, the best one. Mm -hmm. uh, the best one, the 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 most probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that came out wrong. Uh, I meant what you knew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I probably would say the best, but whatever. I'll I'll, I'll die on that hill. Uh, but um, yeah. So you know, it just it it's dawned on me. You know, we we're just talking back and forth, and it's like this is why we watch Netflix so much because we'll go to, you know, another thing and try to do it, and they don't, no subtitles. You know, forget it. Sometimes not even English subtitles. So it's like that will keep me off of a platform, right? Just to the support that that each show is or movie is going to have i don't necessarily care about maybe the x-ray stuff where they show you behind, but that is kind of cool you know when they add that stuff in but for me more or less is just the way to absorb the content that sure. there's options for that and i yeah. think that's very interesting and i think other platforms should jump on that and i think that's why netflix is so popular around the world you right. know other people what do you want netflix netflix, netflix. Yeah, yeah yeah it's a word now right it's just it be right word um and that's Netflix and chill by the way i did not know what that meant the first time i heard it what did you think that meant? <laughs> i th thought it meant hang out watch yeah. some movies <laughs> wait, wait. that's not what that means netflix <laughs> it doesn't mean hang out and watch movies okay i'm <laughs> i'm finding out right now actually i i didn't know i thought you were gonna say something else um uh, okay I'm hooking up that's what i learned Oh my God, I've been saying that to my mother. I didn't even know this is awkward. awkward. Even if she's not Googling it, right? Like yeah, she, Urban Dictionary. Uh -uh. <laughs> anything in her life, she'll never Google anything. Don't worry. <laughs> it's funny how, uh, you know, it's like if I'm taking the technology this way, right, with sort of one eye open, you know, just kind of like. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Kind of like you, you know, I'm, I'm sort of pushed back against at the beginning and now I've, you know, becomes part of work, I guess, and if right. you really have to do it. And there are some bonuses to it, but it is funny how other older generations just completely put it off. But then there's some aspects they love. Like my mother loves going on Facebook and liking a million pictures and totally. just weird things like that. But she's not going to write some post and no. put some, she's not going to email you. You're not, you know, she's not going to send you a link. Some thing she found, like she has no idea about. I love that actually about her. Uh, like, thank you for not sending me the forwards. I appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. She just like, but my mom will like comment sometimes on some of my things. And I never tell her anything just because I love my mother and God bless her. Let her be who she is. 
times comment like 15 times, right? Like a heart emoji 15 different times. She doesn't realize it's going 15. She can't see it. Or a lot of, I remember at the beginning, she said, I thought they were private messages to you. Oh, no. I was like, no, mom, this, everybody sees this, which is great. They're, you know, nothing bad. But I just, God bless her. Yeah. It's so funny. So do parents do that too. Are they kind of, uh, that well, I, well, so yeah, I, I mean, I actually have to say parent wise, they're all fairly savvy Facebook wise, Facebook only, I would say Yeah. maybe Instagram ish. Yeah. That's Ish. Facebook in that sense, right? People are just yeah. now getting a, ha a hold of, of Instagram and then all these TikToks and other things come out. That's the problem. You get the hang of one. Yeah, and then another. I couldn't, so I had a friend who was like, download Snapchat like several years ago. And I was like, okay. And I downloaded it. And then I was like, I don't get this. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> I deleted it. Same thing I did. Opened it up. I did that with Twitter years ago. I still don't, I, think I, I have a Twitter account, but I, ne I barely use it. I, I did this. I probably use the most. Which one? Twitter. Twitter. I probably use the most. Yeah. I know a lot of people use it now. Um, I just remember the beginning when I first got it, 2009 or 2010 or something, or yeah. maybe I, I just remember thinking, I, that's about right. Cause that was, that was one of the accounts that someone got for me because I didn't want to join. <laughs> they, they, yeah. They made sure, which was smart. Boy, that was really smart of those people to be. And honest. I still couldn't get my name. I had to get like an underscore because it had already been taken. How does that work? Do you have to message them, Ryan, and ask, and then they probably want money, uh, you know, or something stupid? Um, so At crazy. At this point, I've had that same thing for so long. I'm like, I don't care. Totally. Totally. No, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. No, that's awesome. Well, gosh, Melissa, this has been so amazing talking to you. I can't tell you how great this has been. I really appreciate you. Thanks just for having me. It's been fun. That's awesome. And, I, you know, I'm sorry we haven't been able to – you know, get together, you know, it's taken a little bit, but we got this. I'm so oh, good. <laughs> amazing uh, conversation again. I'm so sorry for last week that this went, you know, um, I don't know if you know, Aaron Cummings or not. Um, yeah, but yeah, it, it was, awesome. the episode actually went out today. It was a really intense episode. I'll be honest. So it's probably the most intense episode I've ever had on a podcast. Most of them are like this, just very, you know, playful and and whatever and and that was too but it just got emotional and yeah i just wasn't prepared um for that and i know she probably wasn't either and um right i, I in those situations in my life i always just let people that's great i just let them go and i'm there and i don't rush i don't interject i'm you know i'm i'm just there for them uh what yeah. i need I, I i know i i can say stupid things so i don't open my mouth i just like my wife told, just stop talking. Just stop, right? <laughs> it's when you also want to be smart too. Do that too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Well, again, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, hope you get to enjoy, um, yeah, this whole week. You got a whole yes. week here to do. Right. Thank you again, Melissa. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. I really hope you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email the podcast at patrick at texasrealfood.com. And don't forget, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you know, all the different places you can get podcasts, you'll, you'll find us on there. Or you can just go to our website, go to the Lone Star Plate. Dot com. And you can check us out on YouTube if you want to watch it. You know, we video these, now, you know, on a little webcam here and go to the Texas Real Food YouTube channel and you can find it there. Make sure to follow uh, Texas Real Food as well on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe. Um, and if you, you know, are so inclined, please leave us a review anywhere you can. You know, follow us on Spotify or leave a review on Apple Podcast. Uh, that would really help us out. Thanks again for listening. Really do appreciate it. Um, without you guys, we will, you know, what's the point of doing this? So, so if you have any suggestions on how we can make the show better, please let us know. Thanks again. Be safe out there. Wash your hands.